welcome to Wealth Kid Lit today. Um, I'm Claire Story, one of the co-editors of the Wealth Kid Lit blog, um, and I'm thrilled today to be joined by Philippe Paulain um, from Book Island Books um, to tell us about one of their latest releases. Uh, Philippe, welcome. It's fabulous to have you here. Thank you for joining me. Uh, could you tell us about your latest book, please? First of all, Claire, thanks so much for having me during, during World Good Live Month. Um, I'm really proud to show you this, uh, our latest release, this is a dictatorship, which is our first non-fiction title from Spain. It was written by Equipo Plantel, I'm not sure if you can see it well, um, illustrated by Mikael Casal and translated by Lauren Schimmel. This is a book about dictatorships and about what it feels like to live in a country where one person makes up all the rules. And it starts with these gorgeous end papers, which show some of the most well-known dictators um, from around the world, but we'll talk about that a bit later. So let me show you the, uh, the illustration, some of the pages. So um, maybe, I'm not sure if you can read this, um, but I'll, I'll just read the first page. In a dictatorship, one person says what must be done and everyone else does it just because. So it's 48 pages and it talks through, um, as I said, what it's like to live under a dictatorship, um, to live um, with someone who commands everything, who makes up all the laws, who um, gets, up very, gets up in the morning in a very bad mood and um, and can you see this? So you'll have lots of yeah, yeah. Uh, very colorful pages and then you have the, the black ones, the darker ones, where you see people uh, living in fear and uh, the news is being censored. Um, the dictator, he, he spends all day dictating. He dictates the laws, the prizes, but also the punishments. Meanwhile, people are not allowed to say what they think. They're, they're allowed to say what he thinks. Uh, some of them are, are um, forced to leave the country. Meanwhile, he loves doing his parades. Does it remind you of a few people? Possibly so, Here, yes, absolutely. Um, I think this is a very interesting page where it says some people act like his friends, but only because it benefits them. And that's why they defend him, because he lets the rich become even richer. It's a really interesting introduction to, to the concept of dictatorship. And um, it has a, a hopeful ending because dictatorships do end because dictators die or they get kicked out. And that's the beginning of freedom. Um, the book comes with a very short quiz about dictatorship, which is easy to answer for the children and, and the adults. And then it has a little bit of uh, context about dictatorships then and now. Um, this is also really interesting. It's probably our, our first and um, first book that has a little bio of the illustrator, Mikel Kassan. Um, and um, on the back, we've got an amazing quote and endorsement by Max Porter. He's a famous author here in the UK. He's the author of Grieve is a Thing with Feathers. So that's a brief introduction to- Yeah, I mean, it's fabulous. Candy sent me a copy here and it is, it's gorgeous and the quality of the book and the printing is just fabulous as well. It's just a beautiful book to have in my hands. Um, can you tell us perhaps a bit about the history of this book? Because actually in Spain, it's not a new publication, brand new. Could you tell us a bit about perhaps the history of it? Mm -hmm. So let me show you, I've got, yeah, you've got the Spanish edition as well, but this is, this is uh, Así es la dictadura which was first published in 1977 by um, a small publishing house. And it was just after Franco died. Franco died in 1975. And um, three people decided to get together and start writing books about uh, social themes and politics because the climate had changed. And there was much more freedom. People were allowed to talk about these things. And they were a little bit worried that people would forget about dictatorship. So. Um, these three friends sat down. It was uh, a journalist specialized in politics, his wife, who was a pedagogue and a student of politics, of economics, sorry. So every Saturday they, they, they gathered in the kitchen and wrote these picture books. Um, on, the, on the Spanish back cover, you can see that they wrote four books, one on democracy, one on dictatorship, 
social classes and um, gender equality or inequality. Uh, we were only we're only publishing um, this book because this is the one that I think fits our list most. So after the book was published, um, it so these books were all illustrated by the same person called Santa Maria. Now. These authors, Equipo Plantel and the, and the Illustrate, they kind of disappeared into, um, they became, they wanted to remain anonymous. Um, in 19, no, in 2015, Media Vaca was a well, a very well known publishing house in Valencia. They decided to, they found this, these books in an archive and decided um, that it was time to republish them because the, the topics were still very relevant. The dictators hadn't left. We were still struggling with dictatorship. There were still problems with democracy. So they asked four um, well-known Spanish illustrators to re-illustrate each of the book, oh, okay. of the book. And so Miguel Casal was chosen for this particular book. He's a very well-known caricaturist, and very he has a, he grew up under the dictatorship. He was ten years old when Franco died. And uh, so he knew what it was like to, to live in, in fear. He knew how um, his family really suffered. He's from the Basque country. So, you yeah. know, it was uh, particularly difficult for them. And um, so he um, sat down with the publisher and they came up with the idea to introduce these end papers, which is such a clever idea. Um, you will see that the colors from the cover are repeated in the skin color of the of the dictators so you've got the european dictators the asian ones and the african ones and they have three they have they're either pink yellow or blue um so i, I think, think these end papers are, are really very clever as well aren't they i think there's um in one of the blog pieces that michael himself has um written he talks about the order of them about on the front end papers they are by date of birth and on the back end papers, they are by date of death. And I think the amount, the thought that has gone in behind it's the clever. illustrations and the inspiration and only, that he's taken. Yeah, it's only one dictator is still alive. It's yeah. this one. His name is Theodora Obian. Yeah, um, and the illustrations really are quite incredible all the way through that they are very caricature, very over the top in some ways about what it means to be a, bit, a dictator but I think it really works in this context that it's not dealing with a really sad you know it's a very big topic but the illustrations really help to to tell the story in a in a more light-hearted way in a way hmm. they're very playful yes and um I yeah I, I I think um of all of the four books in the series this one is probably is the most powerful yeah. one and um it just stands out yeah so how did you come across it to start with? How did you then start, start to bring it, to sort of think about bringing that to the English speaking market? The first time I spotted the book was in 2016 when I went to the, the big children's book fair in Bologna. That's where children's publishers meet and where we um, pitch books to each other and then buy, okay. a, buy or sell rights to each other. Now this book had just won the Bologna Ragazzi Award, which is one of the biggest awards there. It was for the non-fiction category. It was uh, the, exactly, it was, sorry, it was the entire series. It was just, not just a dictatorship. Yes. And it was also the year that Book Island won the BOP prize for best publisher of Oceania. So we were both at the same ceremony, the award ceremony. So I think there was already yep. a link it all started there. And I remember visiting the stand of the publisher called, um, they're called Media Vaca. And um, I, I was looking for the book and it, I didn't have to look um, because it was just, it was just there, you know, it just jumped out because of the black cover. Um, you might've noticed that very few picture books have a black cover. Yeah. And, and I think this this one is just particularly striking because of the contrast with, with the dictate and the colors. And then you've got this white bit here. And then you can see how how the people are being trampled, um, being crushed underneath uh, the pillars. So um, I thought it was it was an, an, an remarkable um, book, but I wasn't ready for it because we, we had never published picture books about we had never published any nonfiction. And I remember having that conversation with the publishers. Uh, also saying, well, I'm actually moving to the UK now, and yeah. um, this is one of the most stable democratic countries in the world. 
also one of the most difficult markets for picture books. I don't think this book will ever be published there. I don't think there will be a need for it. Yeah. That was in 2016. Yeah. And then and so, we're, so it's taken quite a long time to get it from that first idea. We're now in 2021. But so much has happened since on, on yeah. the political level. We, yeah. we had a referendum. Yeah. Um, then we had Trump. Yeah. And suddenly, yeah. suddenly I felt that we were moving in the right direction. Yeah. It's not the right, it was the wrong direction, but it felt like the climate was changing and there was a need for this book. So after one of the less democratic choices of our parliament, of our um, government uh, two years ago, I put something on Twitter and I showed the cover of the book, the Spanish cover. Yeah. And I said, do you think there's need for this book? And so many people replied to us, yeah, yes, when, when can you publish this? Let's do a Kickstarter, let's do it now. And uh, it took a few more years to, to actually have it uh, translated and, and published. But yeah. first I had a conversation with Lawrence Schimmel, who's the, the translator, because um, he knows the market very well. He knew how difficult it was going to be. Yeah. So um, it's been a long journey, but uh, it's been well worth it. And Yes. Uh, and as it is starting to hit people, you're starting to send copies out. And I think the response on Twitter that I've seen so far has been very positive um, about, about the book. I've also seen this morning um, some work with the Year 6 people, I think, has created a wrap in a response to this. And I think it's definitely hitting a nerve and being received very well. Yes. Um, I, um, I'm really pleased with it, but it was... Um, it, it was in a way um, to be expected that we were going to get this response. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So can you tell me a bit more about sort of bringing it across? I believe you've had some um, help from one of the cultural bodies in Spain, the Acción Cultural Española. Um, how do you go about obtaining one of their grants? So how does that all sort of piece together? Mm. Um, because Spain is going to be the um, guest of honour at the Frankfurt Book Fair in 2022, they um, are releasing more grants now, and uh, we were very lucky to be one of the first to to receive money from them. Um, so um, it's actually Lawrence again who found out about it. So he yeah. sent me all the information. Fortunately, it was the application form was in in English. Previously, they were offering grants, but I remember that everything was in Spanish, which made it really difficult for me to apply. So we um, were really proud to be one of the recipients, and we put that information at the back of, of the book. This, this means that our book is going to be in Frankfurt. It's going to be displayed with all the other Spanish books, um, children's and adult uh, literature that are being have been translated or are being translated at the moment so it's going to be really wonderful to see it on the shelves there yeah it must be an exciting moment to just see it there as well as the other books but this book has been translated into many languages already the actually the entire series so um it it it, it as always it takes a bit longer to have it translated into english so it's uh i know that a lot of of, of our followers already had a copy of the book and uh, some of them in uh, in Russian, in Polish. I've got the entire Polish uh, series here as well. So it um, it really resonated with in lots of different countries. So it was just really time for us to have a UK edition, yeah. which can be shared with American readers as well. Mm. Remember how you just um, you mentioned Mikhail Casal and how he wrote um, a really um, interesting blog post for yes. picture book makers. So I would recommend everyone listening um, in to, to visit that blog because um, they, there were so many decisions they had to make when they, when they re-illustrated the book. Yeah. That um, it's, it's um, actually really interesting to go through the, the thought process and look at the artwork that he created for it. It's, uh, it's a wonderful piece. Yes, so, it really is. And it talks about his, um, his inspiration for his illustrations as well, which I thought was quite interesting, drawing on Charlie Chaplin and actually all these different ideas um, that have come to him as well as he has thought about illustrating. I thought it was really interesting, as you say, a really interesting blog post to hear about how he thought about um, putting the illustrations together. So you spotted the book on one of the shelves at Bologna and with the awards ceremony. 
how did you go from there? How did you approach the Spanish language publisher and how did they react when they heard that you were interested in buying the rights for it? Mm -hmm. So I, I already expressed my, my interest in Bologna, but I, as I said, I, I, I thought the time was not right. So um, I asked the publisher if, because I don't speak Spanish very well, so I asked him if there were any uh, translations available yet in a, in, a, in a language that I speak. And, and he said, uh, well, we don't have one in, in French or Dutch or uh, German yet, but uh, I've got Polish. And th this happens to be the, the language that I translate from. Okay. So I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe my luck. So yeah. He, yeah. he put me in touch with the, the Polish publisher. She sent me all the PDFs and I read through all the books. And I just, I, I just knew that, that this was a perfect book for, for Book Island, but maybe for later. Yeah. Many years later. So when we were finally ready two years ago to go ahead with this book, I contacted the publishers again and they were over the moon to hear that we were interested. They were just slightly disappointed that I only wanted to publish the dictatorship book because they yeah. had been selling the entire series. It really came as a series. Yeah. But they understood and they knew that it was going to be a hard sell anyway here yeah. because of, you know, the way the market works. So, um, we, we signed a contract and they were very generous. So they kept the, the advance really low. The CD fee was also um, very, very low. The price was really low compared to other prices that I pay for the artwork. Yep. So this is something that a lot of people don't know. So we buy the rights. Okay. Uh, so it's a royalty based uh, contract, but we also pay for the artwork because the okay. book has been designed by the publisher, and that is usually a very um, labor intensive and very costly yep. process. So this book arrives as, as a file, as an InDesign file, and it's all laid out. What we need to do is basically, basically, <laughs> as is, if it's easy, we need to have it translated and then we drop the text of the translation okay. in the book. So we don't have to change anything. And that's why we pay for that. But they were very generous and uh, and they've been very um, helpful. They also have been sending us uh, copies of the Spanish edition because we're selling those here in the UK. Okay. Um, it was um, an idea that came from one of the teachers who we work with because they were, uh, sometimes the teachers are more interested in the original edition because they want to work with it and then yep. compare it um, in their classes with, with the translation. And because the Spanish, the, the original um, text is not too difficult, it's a great source text to work with yeah. in, in primary and also um, secondary school. So we're now we're selling these um, on our website, oh, and yes. and we get a lot of teachers who buy both or librarians. Yeah. So uh, that's that's the the first time we've done this, and uh, the publishers were really excited about us. Doing yeah, that. But I think that's a really good idea to to involve those and to have. Will you be putting together any resources to sort of support any of that? Is that a thought that you've perhaps had? We looked into that, so we looked into creating teacher notes for the book, but because we weren't sure whether this is more appropriate for primary or yep. secondary, we got a little bit um, confused there and, and we decided to leave it and just to see what happens. And if someone writes something, we'll share it, but we'll, we'll leave it to the teachers because they are the experts. They know how to work with children, how to yep. talk about politics with them. So um, as a publisher, I usually work with people outside the company who who, who know very well what they're doing. Yeah. So I expect something will come from, yeah. from that group of people. And will there be any distribution um, outside the UK? Our books are uh, distributed outside the UK. Okay. And um, so what, what happens is that um, our distributor works with other distributors in, in other countries and they can order the books in. It, it's a long process and with Brexit, it's really not easy. Yeah. Um, but we, we, you can buy the book from our website um, if you're outside, outside the UK. Unfortunately, shipping costs are really rather high, but it's a very light book. It's our lightest book yeah. and it fits in, in, a, in a small envelope in a... Um, a mailer and yeah. that keeps the, um, the costs low. And could so, you just remind us, just if anybody does want to buy, what is your website address? Hmm. So we are bookisland.co.uk. We've actually just had an order from the US. Someone bought the Spanish and, um, 
and the UK edition. So there's definitely uh, um, interest from from uh, outside the UK, which is wonderful. Yes, that does sound really good. Um, and we've also, over the last few weeks, as we've sort of been discussing, discovered some other books as well, which might work really well as sort of pairing reading um, to support the idea of this dictatorship. Um, mm -hmm. So I know we've come, we've talked about Mexique by Maria Jose Ferrada, um, illustrated by Spaniard Ana Peñas. Yeah, so um, yeah, go on. I've got the Fount Fountains of Silence, which is YA, which I read um, during the um, the Kate Greenaway Carnegie uh, shortlist uh, period. One of our books, this is the, the Swedish edition, The Bird Within Me was shortlisted and I thought I, I should read all the other books on the list and that's how I found out about Ruta Sepetis, a book about um, Franco's dictatorship and uh, it's, a, it's a love story set in Madrid in 1957. It's really um, very gripping. I read it in one go during one night wow. <laughs> and I can recommend it to everybody. It's it's not a translation. Okay. It's written um, by, by Suruta, who's an American author. I'm sure you know her. She won the Carnegie two years ago, three years ago, okay. I think. Um, but um, I would really love to see Mexique because I, 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 I read actually on your blog um, yes. what it's about and I love the artwork. It's, the book was published by Edmund. a small publisher who I met in Bologna and I, do you know more about them? Uh, Edmunds, I don't know a huge amount about them, I'll be honest. Um, I know that they have published both Mexique and the other ones that I would be interested um, to sort of pair up with that would be Nino's Poems for the Lost Children of Chile, uh, which Lawrence Schimmel has also translated. Um, again, by Maria Jose Ferrada, um, which are poems which, during the Chilean dictatorship, lots of people disappeared, um, including um, a number of children. And so in this poetry book, they have created um, these wonderful poems about these children, almost in a what if they had lived, what if they were alive, what would they be doing? Um, I think that's a really poignant um, poetry collection to read alongside it. Um, on Twitter, we also had Avery um, Fisher Udagawa suggesting um, the world's poorest president speaks out, um, yes. which is another picture book. Um, and this was based on a speech um, that was given by um, Uruguay's 40s president, um, Jose Mojica, um, where he spoke at one of the UN councils. Um, and so a Japanese author, uh, Yoshimi Kusaba, put together the story about this illustrated by uh, Gaku Naka, Nakagawa um, and translated into English by Andrew Wong. So there are, it appears to be there are quite a few books around at the moment which would really support um, This is a Dictatorship as well. Mm. I wonder why there's such suddenly such a flurry of picture books about dictatorship. I actually, I think it's because there's a need for them. Yeah. Because things are changing and yeah. uh, um, especially with, with, with what happened in the US, with the US yeah. elections. Um, I think a lot of people feel it's important to, to talk about politics more, of, more often and more openly yeah. um, because um, actually this is something that is written on the back of our edition of This is a Dictatorship. Um, and this is something that the Spanish publishers said. Um, children are interested in everything adults are interested in. You must explain things to them, even if it requires effort. I think a lot of parents, a lot of teachers and librarians think that politics are not really for children. But if you um, introduce them to these topics at a young age with the help of a picture book, I think they will be more um, ready for, for real life when, when, uh, when they're grown up. Yeah. So um, I think okay. also This is a Dictatorship is a book that will, it will linger and it will... Um, it um, raised lots of, of um, raised lots of questions about di not only dictatorships but also democracy. Yeah. When does a democracy stop being a democracy, and what should we look out for? I think it's important for children to see those symptoms and to understand what's going on, and also for adults. I think this is also very much a book for adults. Yes, yes and for definitely. illustrators because we know they they love the artwork. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Preet, for introducing us to this book. Thank you for 
picking it up and publishing it in English for us so that we can all access it. Um, and thank you so much for participating in World Kid Lit Month, um, which has been a fabulous celebration of books in translation. Um, and thank you for all that you do working with books in translation for younger readers. We really appreciate it. Well, I really appreciate what you do at uh, World Kid Lit. Um, it's and the team. You know, you're you're putting so much energy into um celebrating children's books from around the world thank you so much and also thank you to all the listeners and and um everyone who's interested in this is a dictatorship thank you Kate. we'll speak again soon yes. bye for now bye have a lovely day <laughs>